Hey guys, welcome back again to Ken Tamplin Vocal Academy, where the proof continues to be in the actual singing. We got quite a few requests for this one. It's how to practice a song, or how do I practice singing a song? Well, there's a lot of diverse information on YouTube and the internet. Um, I'm just gonna share my own personal testimony with you, and then you can use that information if it'll help you. Um, and the first thing is, I would practice something that's well within your vocal range, or well within what's called your tessitura, or the sweet spot of what vocal registration you have. So if you're a baritone, that's one thing, or a tenor, alto, contralto, soprano, whatever that is, it's well within your range. So you're not stretching yourself so far that you get so frustrated that you lose confidence that you can't sing something, okay? So in fact, it, often to this day, uh, if there's a piece that um, I'm, I'm gonna work up, I might practice it a half step lower or a full step lower just to kind of get a lay of the land and, and figure out you know, how it feels in my voice and throat. And then I'll, I'll you know, build stamina up and I'll work myself up to the original key. I do this to this day, right now, still. So I wanna encourage you that you know, we're all human um, and no one's immune from that. So we all have, um, have to you know, build up stamina and build up you know, this stuff to this registration. That's the first thing. The other thing is that we're not trying to be note gods. We're not trying to go on American Idol and go, and just like kill some note out of somewhere, right? What we're trying to do is we're trying to get pitch is king tone is king, pitch and tone. If we can get those two things together, we've won 80% of the battle, even above range and all that stuff, and then selling the story. So once we have confidence in pitch, once we have confidence in tone, and then what are the lyrics saying? Like, how are you selling the song? It's not just because you can sing someone else's song or a song you've written, whatever. It's that, what's the conviction and how are you able to represent that song in a way that's believable with passion? So that's far more important than range and all this other stuff. Tone is king, pitch, pitch is king first. Tone is king and then selling the story, it's all you know, part of the package. So I have a singing course called How to Sing Better Than Anyone Else and I cover all this in the course. Um, in fact, I have a singers forums um, that has over 12,000 members now with great moderation where you can join it for free, you can post videos, ask questions on how you're doing uh, and so forth and we can encourage you and 12,000 guys are gonna come alongside of you, not 12,000, but quite a few of them will come alongside of you and share their story with you and you can interact with them at kentamplinvocalacademy.com. So let's get back to how, how to sing um, you know, any song or how to practice a song. So the other thing that I do is one of the things that we need to understand, and I've covered this in a lot of different videos and my course especially, is to build up muscle memory for vowel sounds. Let me say this again, to build up muscle memory for vowel sounds. Let me give you an example of this. Let's say I want to, I want to pick off a pop song, and let's say it's Bruno Mars' When I Was Your Man, okay? So I go, same bad, but it feels just a little bit bigger now. Also on the radio, but it don't sound the same. Right, so I've got this certain pitch and certain whatever. What I would do is when I'm first starting out is I would sing with vowels only first because I'll explain why consonants get in the way of the throat spasming and closing down and you getting caught in the vowels. In fact, some people say, hey, you know, I can do, I can sing really high in singing scales, but I can't apply that to singing. This is why, okay? so. Right? So if I can avoid the consonants of constantly closing down the back of the throat and helping to reopen the vowel, what happens is, is I can have what's called contiguous phrase singing. When I do that, I get the freedom and the relaxation in the throat. And then, little by little, all I do is add just a little bit of that consonant. Same bad, but it feels just a little bit bigger now. It's just a little bit of it. I don't have to add a lot, just enough for you to be able to understand the words. Very, very important, okay? The other thing too is, the higher up we go, the more we have to close down those vowels. And again, I cover all this in my singing course where the vowels themselves can't be so big and we use even less of the consonants themselves so that we continue with this contiguous phrase singing. And here's why. When we sing, there's the epiglottis rolls across the back of the throat. And if you wanna, there, I have a whole video on how does the voice work. Check it out, I discuss all this in this video. 
the epiglottis comes back and it, it toggles or it, it literally acts as the umpire or the referee of the throat. You have your trachea, which is how you breathe, and you have your epiglottis, which is how you swallow. So swallowing for food, trachea for breathing and, and sound. And this thing mitigates or referees where this uh, air is supposed to go or whether if we're going to swallow something, swallow, you know, a food, excuse me, or if air is going to come in and out. So as it toggles back and forth in the throat, it negotiates um, your ability to understand how this is going to go up into what's called the velonasal port or up into your, your sinus cavity and it switches. So in other words, here's it sounds crazy, bear with me. I know it's kind of a little bit complicated. And again, I cover all this in my course. If you're interested, grab it because I have a huge section on this. But what happens is, that, is I'm talking to you. If I go, um, ba, ga, hum. Okay, those are called hard glottal stops. And those glottal stops, what happens is if I go, same bed, but it feels just a little bit bigger now, right? Every time I do that, I can't have contiguous airflow coming out of the mouth. So what typically happens with most people is, same bed, but it feels just a little bit bigger now. And there's, there's a, a, a chirp or a yodel that happens because the back of the throat is trying to negotiate, huh, do you want air to come out of the throat? Do you want it to come out of the nose or a percentage in between? Can you please make up your mind? Well, until you understand how to negotiate this stuff, you won't know. Now, I, again, in my course, I cover how to take soft consonants and work them up first. So instead of same bed, you can use a V. Same bed, but it feels just a little bit bigger now. And I used V, 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 so I, I can have contiguous airflow coming out of the mouth. If I don't do the same bed, but it feels just a little bit bigger now, right? It switches and it wants to know, wow, do you want air to come out of the throat or the nose or a combination? So you have to build up muscle memory for this first. So let's go back and do this over again. Pick a song well within your range. Work your vowels up first in the song that you're all the way through with no, no consonants at all, right? And as you add consonants, add, add them only as you need them, right? And use soft consonants of things, soft vowels, so you can get through to have contiguous airflow coming out of them. By the way, an example of this, um, there's an old Steve Perry song. I'm going to use uh, Lights, is a Steve Perry. For those of you who don't know, just look it up. Fine. But when the lights go down in the city and the sun shines on the bay, ooh, I want to be there in my city. Right. It's this Sam Cooke sort of approach where all the vowels are just fluid and they're coming out like one beautiful, long, gorgeous whole tone. I get it. And when the lights go down in the city, you know, and I can make it choppy, right? And really compress that sound or really choke it off. But if I have this contiguous phrase singing going on, all of a sudden it opens up the ability for all the vowels that we've trained in my course to get your sound nice and big and robust. That's why you probably say, Ken, how is it possible you're able to sing those notes so high and it just sounds so open and roary? because I worked up the vowels first, got the open throat contiguous phrase singing first, and then I just drop in those consonants as I need them in order to be able to get you to hear. By the way, it's a much more beautiful sound too. It's not like uh, we're compromising anything. In fact, it's even better because the sound is more open and then all we have to do is just drop in just a couple consonants for people to get to understand what the words themselves are. So I hope this was helpful for you guys. Please like and subscribe to my channel, Ken Tamplin Vocal Academy, where the proof is in the singing. Until next time, peace. Out. Thunderstruck!